Thus far, we've assumed that everything in our models is known perfectly. In part to simplify the models, we've assumed that a firm knows its cost function with certainty, a consumer knows her utility function with certainty, and a good has supply and demand curves that are certain. Yet it's almost always the case that we don't know everything for certain. We often need to make decisions for which there's a substantial amount of uncertainty. Consider your decision of what to study for the AP exam. If you knew the exact proportion each topic would be covered on the exam, you could study very efficiently, focusing on those topics that will be covered in detail and ignoring the topics that will not be. But unless you have some inside information not available to the rest of us, you just don't know exactly what will show up in the exam. You have to make a decision under uncertainty on how much to study each topic. You face a similar kind of uncertainty every time you decide whether to carry an umbrella or make a bet with a friend on a sporting event. And as you get to be my age, you'll find the uncertainties multiply. There's uncertainty about how much health and life insurance to buy, whether to buy a seven-year variable or 30-year fixed mortgage, or whether to buy an expensive car that will last a long time, or a cheaper car that may break down sooner. How do economists think about individuals making these decisions? They use the tools of expected utility theory. Let's say I offered you the following bet. I'm going to flip a coin. If it comes up heads, I'll give you $125. If it comes up tails, you give me $100. Would you take this bet? For now, don't think too much about the math. Just go with your first instinct. Heads you win $125, tails you lose $100. Would you do it? One way you might think about this is to consider whether this is a good deal for you financially or not. To determine this, we could look at the expected value of the bet, or how much money you'd make on average if you made this bet over and over again. The expected value is computed by adding together the probability of an outcome times the value of that outcome for all the possible outcomes. In this case, there's a one-half chance the coin comes up heads and you win $125. The probability of that outcome times the value of that outcome to you is one-half times 125, or 6250. And there's a one-half chance that the coin comes up tails and you lose $100. The probability of that outcome times the value of that outcome is one half times negative 100 or negative 50. Adding these together gives us an expected value of 6250 plus negative 50 or positive 1250. The expected value of this bet is positive for you. A fair bet would be one of zero expected value. Since this bet has a positive expected value, it's a more than fair bet. So this bet is a good deal for you financially you expect to make money off it. But I bet most of you would not have taken this bet and risked losing $100 to me. Indeed, whenever I offer this chance to my microeconomics class, only about 20% of them take me up on it. Does this mean you're wrong or made a mistake? No. It means that like most of us, you are risk averse. Individuals who are risk averse don't like risk. So even if a gamble's fair or even somewhat more than fair, these people might avoid the risk and not take the gamble. To account for this, economists often model uncertainty using expected utility theory. Expected utility is like the expected value we computed earlier, but instead of taking a probability weighted average of the dollars you'd win or lose in each outcome, we take a probability weighted average of your utility of each outcome. Why is using utility different than just using dollars? because of the diminishing margin utility of dollars. Diminishing margin utility means that the next dollar is worth less to you than the last. As a result, losing one dollar makes you sadder than winning one dollar makes you happy. And the result is risk aversion. You won't take some gambles that are more than fair because the joy from winning is smaller than the pain from losing. Even though your wealth would be expected to be higher if you take this bet, your utility would be expected to be lower. Unlike with expected value, expected utility doesn't weight gain and losses the same. So in the example we use here, the extra $125 doesn't make you as much happier as losing $100 makes you sadder. The gain in utility from getting $125 is smaller than the loss in margin utility from losing $100, so you don't take the gamble. This type of risk aversion is why we buy insurance for things like health, life, and fire even though the insurance companies tend to make money off us from these purchases. Indeed, 
individuals purchased more than $1.5 trillion worth of insurance in the U.S. last year alone. Risk-averse individuals are made worse off by a gamble. And being uninsured is basically gambling. If you're uninsured for home fire coverage, you're gambling that you won't have a fire. If you're uninsured for your health, you're gambling that you won't get sick. And since we risk-averse individuals don't like these gambles, we pay an insurance company to take those gambles away from us. That's what insurance is, a way to pay to get out of uncertainty that we don't like. By now you might be asking the question, if individuals are so risk averse, why is it that actual gambling, say in Las Vegas or through state lotteries, is so popular in the US? In the US, gambling generates revenues of nearly $100 billion a year. And that's just the legal gambling that gets reported to the government. When the Denver Broncos faced off against the Carolina Panthers in Super Bowl 50, it's estimated that over $4 billion in bets, mostly illegal, were placed on that single game. Yet most gambling's a ripoff. Bets placed in casinos have an average payout of less than a dollar for each dollar bet. That is, they're less than fair. It's even worse with the lottery. On average, a $1 lottery will pay out only 50 cents. The expected value of buying the lottery ticket is negative 50 cents. This is even worse than our coin flip bet from earlier. At least in that bet, the expected value was positive for you. So why do so many people play the lottery? We offer some theories in the application video.